All right. So, yeah, that that was just fantastic. Um, the, the interview was originally going to be a little bit shorter, but we were having so much fun hearing uh, Susie talk about TV. We let it run on. So we're hoping you guys all enjoyed that as much as we did. Um, and thanks again to her for being, you know, so great. Um, Annette, another Cyblogs uh, post written this week, and it was written by me, but but this is not a shameless self-plug, I promise, except it is a little bit. Um, but first, <laughs> first the facts, is this is really interesting. Um, Ulan Bator is trying out a geoengineering scheme, and um, this is not something that people often do, and this is certainly the first time this has been tried before. Now, Ulan Bator is the capital of Mongolia, and I will tell you guys shortly why it is that I'm learning so much about Mongolia. Um, and because it's it's basically it's pretty far inland, it's pretty high up, and it's on an enormous continent. One of the things it suffers from is the continental uh, continentality effect, which means that it suffers large extremes in temperature. Um, Ulan Bator is the coldest national cap capital in the world, with I think it was an average temperature during the year of minus 2.4 degrees so it's not a balmy place but in summer yeah. in, in midsummer the average temperature gets up into sort of 23s or so which is is pretty warm considering that in midwinter it drops down to uh, averages of minus high 20s minus 27 plus uh, in average and deep winter so it gets very cold um, and one of the things that that Mongolia or Ulan Bator has to battle with a little bit is energy consumption during summer for air conditioning um, as 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 I'm sure people understand depending on the weather you're used to you get used to well certain weather so people who live in cold climates don't find 23 degrees sort of warm and comfy and jeans wearing temperatures they may actually find it quite hot and there's also always fresh water issues. I mean, it's always nice to have lots and lots of fresh water around. So thinking about this, a Mongolian engineering team has has suggested something really interesting. They've said, let's build an artificial NALED. Um, they're also called off ice or ice shields. Now, what happens in the very far south or the very far north in river and stream valleys is that ice sheets form during um, during winter, but they form far thicker than you would normally expect. They form to to be several meters thick. Um, we're thinking two to five to to possibly more. It's 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 a lot, um, and uh, so they've said, look, why don't we just build some of these? Now, how a lot knowledge is formed in in um, nature is that as water freezes, other water is forced over the top of the ice, and you get successive layers of ice depositing and these engineers have said okay well let's let's take the Tool River which is this wonderful river that flows through um, the southern part of Ulan Bator as well as through a bunch of other amazing places and said when it freezes over in winter let's go and drill um, bore a whole lot of holes, uh, holes in it which will allow water up and onto the surface and you'll get again the successive packing of ice they're hoping to get an ice shield seven meters thick and the wow. idea there is that it will provide fresh water as it melts, but it's also going to cool the entire city down during summer. Huh. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, it was apparently uh, first put forward as an idea in the early 1980s, but it's taken a while for, for there to be uptake of it. And the engineering firm, again behind it, um, says, well, not only could this be used in a number of cities around the world, but it's also a natural way to counter things like um, the erosion of permafrost. This, if, if it's sensibly used, could help replace permafrost and, and whatnot as, as that melts because of uh, climate change. So really clever, really simple solution that kind of feels so obvious. It's, it feels like, why, why did we not think of this before? Um, so yeah, and, and I was writing about it, and this is the brief self-plug moment, because next year I'm doing the Mongol rally. Uh, look it up, but basically a friend and I are charging 16,000 kilometers from London to Ulaanbaatar in a very, very small car. And so we're looking up stuff around the region. Uh, we're also looking for sponsors. Um, so yes, uh, there are details. Look me up uh, if if you want to get involved in any way, or just watch watch the uh, adventure as it happens. All right, we will <laughs> with uh, with with interested eyes, I do believe, Amy. <laughs> and I think that's actually all we have time for this week. Mm. Uh, so we'll wrap up by saying thanks to all the usual uh, people. So a big thanks to Rian Sheehan for our opening and closing themes. Mm -hmm. um, a big thanks to Amy. <laughs> for putting everything together and turning up because you thanked me last week um, 
Uh, yes, and, and do remember, please, to check out the Cyblogs events calendar. There's actually so much going on at the moment that we haven't even bothered going into it. So if you go to Cyblogs and you hit the events tab or at cyblogs.co.nz forward slash events, there, there is a ton of interesting stuff. Check that out. Um, as always, uh, relevant links for this podcast will be posted up on our blog, which is cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP. And all that remains for me is to do is to thank Elf. Thank you, Elf. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, join us again next week. We're going to have some very cool stuff. Um, you know, just a shameless self-plug for me now, because Amy's already done hers. Um, it is the McDermott Institute Discovery Awards this week, and uh-huh. this is where, where we get uh, six of the top students from science in New Zealand to come and work with us for a couple of days at Victoria University in Wellington. They get to hang out with yours truly, which I think is a pretty amazing prize for them. <laughs> Um, and then they actually come back in January and they work for two weeks with some of the McDermott researchers in their lab. So I'm going to be having a good old chat to them this week and uh, we'll see how that turns out next week. Fantastic. Other than that, catch you then. Indeed. Bye-bye. Bye.